The year is 2020. Mojang just released Minecraft version 1.16, which completely revamped the nether with piglin bartering, bastions, and more. These new features gave speedrunners a bunch of new strategies with which to beat the game, and all of a sudden, Minecraft speedrunning had caught on like wildfire. Everybody and their mother was trying to see how fast they could beat this children's video game. Everybody except me. <laughs> I mean, I remember doing a couple runs back in the day, but trying to learn all the different strategies was overwhelming and I never actually completed a run. But that all changes today. I gave myself one week to learn how to speedrun Minecraft, and in doing so, subjected myself to emotional highs and lows, the likes of which I could have never expected. Did I come out the other end with a new fast time? Or did the never-ending reset simulator crush my hopes and dreams? Let's find out. As I said before, I've never completed a Minecraft speedrun. I also haven't touched this game in months, so I was expecting that first day to be just terrible. Like, forgetting how to craft a pickaxe level of terrible. So imagine my surprise when my very first run made it farther than I've ever gotten in a speedrun. I loaded into the world and almost immediately saw a village, which gave me some bread and a few iron. I also found a ruined portal that had enough lava for me to make another portal and suddenly I was in the nether after only 8 minutes. While mining, I stumbled upon a bastion and found a huge pile of gold. So I mined it all up and sure the pigs were a little angry at first, but they quickly realized they had no way to reach me and I was able to trade with them unharmed. Ah, uh, Oh god. Sensory overload. Too many items. There's too many- guys, stop. There's too many things. I'm too rich. Can you guys slow down a bit? Admittedly, it did take me a while to find a fortress, but once I did, my fire res made it trivially easy to beat up some blazes, so all I had left to do was find the stronghold. After a couple eye throws, I found the right chunk, dropped into the stronghold, filled in the portal, and entered the end in 51 minutes. And to say I was surprised that my progress would be a massive understatement. I was ready for this whole, like, progression where I'm just terrible at first, and then after learning and stuff, I get better until I'm, like, halfway decent. Um, but I'm, I kind of skipped all the learning part. Um, but unfortunately, this is where things went south. I wanted to use beds to blow up the dragon, but instead, oh, I think he's doing it. No, 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 no. I blew up myself. Now, after seeing that run, you might think, oh, this guy already knows all about speedrunning. And sure, I do occasionally watch speedrunners like Feinberg and Curryway, so I know like the very basics. But trust me, that run was just ridiculously lucky. Think about this, the setup for making a surface lava portal is super easy to memorize. I didn't have any sort of optimized route for the bastion, I just kind of mined around till I found gold. So where do I go? Uh, just up? When in doubt, go up? I have no idea how to properly locate the stronghold, I just guessed and got it right. So there's like a, a freaking calculator thing that you can use. You throw two eyes and then you find out where the portal room is based on that. I don't have that. So I guess I can just go off of vibes? Vibes? You think you're going to become the best speedrunner by using vibes? But the worst part was that two of my eyes had broke while trying to find the stronghold, and I didn't have any blaze powder to make more. So instead of, I don't know, being smart and going back to the nether for more, I decided to gamble and hope that the portal would have two eyes already filled in. And guess what? It did! I was 100% ready to have to see zero eyes here and be like, ah, well next time you know but i freaking okay cool that's only a 23 percent chance by the way regardless of the broken luck that run boosted my confidence into the stratosphere man i just had my first run make it to the end in under an hour after not having played the game in months 
I'm a god. I'm a literal deity, dude. So, with my ego definitely not inflated whatsoever, I dove headfirst into the next run. It took me a bit, but eventually I got another run that made it to the nether, but I couldn't find a bastion. I knew I needed ender pearls, so I instead spent half an hour hunting down endermen and made it all the way to the end portal before realizing I didn't have any string to make beds. So another good thing about piglin bartering is you get string for beds, which you need to kill the dragon. And if you don't get those, then you can get all the way to the end portal and, and realize you wasted almost an hour for, for nothing. Uh, hypothetically, of course, that would never happen to me. Okay, so maybe I'm not a god. But this mistake was actually a really good learning moment because it taught me that bastions aren't just a nice way to save some time. They are critical in completing a run. And if I wanted to become a true speedrunner, I would need to learn how to properly and quickly navigate bastions. Oh boy, here we go. Not all bastions are created equal. There are actually four different types of bastions in Minecraft. And luckily, a top speedrunner known as K4 has made a video series explaining exactly how to route every type of bastion. This man is my hero. <laughs> He'd also linked a practice map in the description, so I got that bad boy downloaded. Last update almost two years ago, eh? Well, I'm glad I picked such a relevant and current topic for my video. Don't worry guys, Minecraft speedrunning is super duper popular right now. Just please take my word for it, no need to check. <laughs> Whatever, I've got a bunch of practicing to do, so I just gotta get started. What followed was a three day long grind of nothing but bastion routing. And yeah, you heard me right. By the time I was comfortable with the different routes, the challenge was already almost halfway over. There's a couple reasons for this. First, you have to be so precise with these routes. If you make one wrong move, misplace one block, make any mistake at all, you're done for. Those piglins will gobble you up like a horde of middle schoolers on pizza lunch day. The second reason, I actually had a fair bit of IRL stuff going on with school and life and all that. Remember, this challenge lasts for one calendar week, not a week's worth of playtime. That timer is still counting down if I'm sleeping, eating, working, doesn't matter. Time stops for no one. Other than that, there's not much to say about this section because it was just so incredibly boring. You learn how to run the route, try it out yourself, probably fail, and then you try again, and again, and again, continuously repeating the same motions as you watch the minutes turn into hours, turn into days, a sick and twisted groundhog day that traps you in, numbing your senses with its monotony until every single keystroke has been committed to muscle memory. Every cognitive activity is replaced with gold blocks and snorting pigs like a brain worm controlling your every move. Oh, hey, look. Ancient debris. Oh, my. <laughs> Dude, that just naturally spawned. Yo. Yo, that's insane. Wait, what Y level are we at? 70? 70? I've never seen that in vanilla Minecraft, but what, d d huh? Wait, I don't even think I can mine this with an iron pick. Yeah, no, I definitely, pfft. well, okay. I guess that just stays there forever. Once I got the hang of Bastion routing, it was time to put my newfound skills to the test on some real runs, but not before downloading some quality of life speedrunning mods from another K4 tutorial. These mods are legal, by the way. They've all been approved by the speedrun.com moderators. I swear, I would never cheat. I don't have nearly enough subs to get away with that. <laughs> These mods include an auto world generator, boosted gamma, and an automatic built-in timer, which I guess means I don't need live split anymore. So goodbye, live split. <laughs> nice knowing ya. I was hoping that all the bastion practice would lead to more runs making it to the end, but instead, the next day was filled with what I'd like to call 
The Great Reset Simulator. For the life of me, I just could not get a good seed. Deserts had zero surface lava, oceans had zero lava ravines, and so, so many seeds just spawned me in a random forest. Like, gee, thanks game, really giving me a lot to work with here. Also, random side comment, hey, villagers, if you don't have a job, and I place a job site next to you, don't pawn off the work to your buddy 50 blocks away. Because now I have to wait five whole minutes for him to waddle on over and take the job. Come back. Wait, where do you even... Oh, there he is. <laughs> I was like, where'd he go? You have to take this job site. There's no way that another villager is going to walk up. I swear to God. <laughs> These villagers are the stupidest... I- Where are you going now? At this point, I was getting kinda nervous. When I started this challenge, I thought I'd be completing multiple runs a day, watching my PB steadily get faster as I improve my skills, but here we are with three days left and I've beaten the game zero times? What if I never finish a run? What if we get to the end of the video and I have to be like, Hey, sorry guys, I know you wanted to watch me get better at speedrunning, but turns out I couldn't. Oops. That's not a satisfying conclusion. Heck, I haven't even been in the end since day one. But finally, that was about to change. A classic desert spawn with a nearby village and a lava pool got me into the nether in exactly five minutes. Once inside, I successfully e raid the Bastion and routed it with almost zero complications. There's one guy. Oh god. Yeah, 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 Okay, 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 okay. Hey, I said almost, but this is where things got a little more goofy. Oh god, I don't remember how to do the thing, the, um, fortress thing. That fortress thing I'm referring to is the strategy for quickly locating a fortress. If you press F3 and A, a little pie chart pops up. And this fella shows you every mob, entity, and everything else loaded within your render distance. Now, if that sounds completely busted and overpowered to you, uh, that's because it is. You can manipulate the pie chart to show mob spawners, which just so happen to generate in nether fortresses, guaranteed. And, as someone who was in the process of looking for a fortress, this seemed like the perfect time to pause my speedrun and look up a rec rap video on how to use the pie chart. I'm allowed to just, like, look up strats in the middle of a run, right? <laughs> but that's not even the goofy part. Because mob spawners aren't only found in fortresses, they can also generate in one of the four types of bastions, the treasure bastion. And guess who just so happened to be standing right next to a treasure bastion? I'll give you a hint. He's greasy, cheesy, and currently wasting way too much time learning a strategy that won't even work on this run because the pie chart's just showing the bastion spawner. Okay, fine. I'll find my fortress the old-fashioned way by running in a random direction and getting lucky. I got all my blaze rods and headed back to the overworld where I immediately faced a new problem. Ah, uh, am I allowed to just download the triangulation thing now? I mean, this run is so scuffed anyway, I might as well download a bot to locate the stronghold. Again, this is completely legal, even though it doesn't feel like it should be. I don't know, something about being able to throw two eyes and immediately know the exact coordinates of the stronghold using an external device feels a little overpowered. Or I guess it's overpowered for everyone else, because I could not get it to work for me. So I just wasted another 10 minutes of my already limited challenge time and three eyes. Uh, I didn't lose three eyes from that. That, that wouldn't make sense. I definitely didn't lose three whole eyes from doing that. I think I lost three eyes from doing that. Huh. 
So I made my way to the stronghold the normal way, found the portal, found just enough pearls from a chest to complete the portal, mined wood from a library because I forgot to chop trees earlier, and jumped into the end at just 34 minutes on the clock. My brain decided this was the perfect time to remind me of one small little detail. Oh, you know what else I was gonna do? I was gonna learn how to one cycle. Huh. Bro, get it together. As I stood atop my cobblestone pillar waiting for the dragon to perch, my thoughts raced back to that tragic first run almost four days prior. Back then, I was inexperienced, a complete noob stumbling my way to the end fight. But things were different now. I had trained. Not specifically for this fight, but regardless, I had grown so much over the course of this challenge. I knew I was ready to complete my very first Minecraft speedrun. Let's do this. That's it, I think. Hmm. No, I did it wrong. I placed the bed wrong. I was meant to place it on that block, and I placed it not there at all. Was I upset that I messed up the dragon fight again? Of course. But with every failure comes an opportunity for growth. And for me to grow as a speedrunner, I would need to learn how to properly defeat that dragon. I found a rec rap tutorial on everything related to the endgame, from finding the portal room to setting up the one cycle. See, that's what I was trying to do. To even memorizing the specific movements that indicate the dragon's about to perch. And that K4 guy from earlier came with an end fight practice map, so I booted that bad boy up and got to work. Again. One cycling is the term for using beds to blow up the dragon and it's based entirely on good timing. See that little box around its head? You need to wait for the dragon to get close enough to the pillar, but not too close or it'll just delete your bed, and then click the bed when the box is directly above it. The dragon flies horizontally back and forth above the pillar, so simply place a bed, middle click the mouse button to get another bed, explode the first bed at the right time, then place the next one. Repeat until the dragon's been slain. Got it? Good. Because I sure as heck didn't. I spent way too many attempts waiting too long to click the bed and then just... That is such a demoralizing way for a run to die, man. Like you're standing there, eagerly waiting for the right moment to click that bed, and then it's just gone. At least have it explode when the dragon hits it, or burst into a pile of wool, or something. I would rather spontaneously combust upon failure than have literally nothing happen. Like, just give me something. I did eventually learn how to click my right mouse button, uh, but I quickly encountered a new problem. The dragon is supposed to fly horizontally across the pillar, right? Well, my dragons would do that for the first two beds, uh, but then they always switch to a diagonal pattern, which cuts your bed's damage ability by a significant amount. This happened every single time. I have no idea what causes it to happen. And I never learned how to fix it. Yeah. Now, under normal circumstances, I would just keep practicing until I got the technique down. But I was on a time crunch here. Every single attempt, my brain kept reminding me, Oh, you've only got a couple days left. You better get back to the reset simulator if you want to complete a run in time. So, after a couple hours, even though I still wasn't comfortable with one cycling, I exited the practice map and went back to speedruns. But I mean, that's fine. The dragon fight isn't even that important anyway. It's not like it's the final obstacle in your path to victory. The key battle that determines whether your run ends in triumph or in tragedy. Besides, I'd already messed up the end fight twice, what were the chances I'd blow it a third time, right? No, I did, though! Okay, let's look at this run a bit more closely. It was a pretty rough seed all around, what with being forced to dig underground for lava, having rough terrain in the nether, and these insane blaze rates. Still three. How many of these guys have I killed and I've only gotten three? Statistics. 13 for 3.
but I got to the end just after 30 minutes and waited for the dragon to do his thing. Okay, so I ender pearl in right here. Good. Everything's good so far. Got my beds all set up. Place it down, and you'll see the pattern here. It turns left, and then it turns right. That's the pattern that the dragon does, left and right. So it goes left again, and then this time, when it goes right, I actually don't click the bed because I'm like, it's too high. So it goes left again, click the bed. Uh, but then this time, instead of going right, it went left again. It tur it's turning left. So now it's starting to do its whole diagonal pattern, and I misclick the bed there, and then the run's just all over. More than five days of my life dedicated to speedrunning Minecraft. After all the hours of practicing, resetting, and practicing again, I was getting kind of tired. And when I get tired, my ability to function as a human being just completely vanishes. Where does it go? I don't know, but it led to some pretty embarrassing misplays. Our first contender for worst misplay comes from run number 5 billion, probably. I don't know. There were a lot of runs. <laughs> where I entered the nether and immediately e raid the bastion. Whoa, okay there. See, now that's a spike. That's what I call a certified S-P-I-K-E spike. Great commentary there, buddy. So I ran towards the S-P-I-K-E until I hit a wall. And for some reason, I decided to tunnel up and then across instead of just tunneling straight across. Uh, which led to this. I think I've just been going the wrong way. I was not going the wrong way. I was not going the wrong way. At all. I was actually on top of it. I was too high. Ah. All I had to do was look down and I would have seen the entities. Man, if I'd moved the mouse down two inches, I would have had a run. But that blunder pales in comparison to misplay number two, which starts with this gem of a quote. God, if this is the run that like gets me my first completion, it's going to be so bad because I've not been commentating at all because I'm just dead tired i'm messing everything up too i really kind of hope that i lose this is that bad <laughs> yes yes it is but as you can see we're about to enter the end so i gotta clutch up and really pay attention if i want to win this run oh shit dude i wasn't paying attention <laughs> Okay, but in my defense, I was waiting on that pillar for like 10 minutes for that stupid dragon to perch. I got bored, okay? Sue me. If at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. Somebody. I'm not really sure who. I mean, me, I guess. I did just say it. Um, after so many failed attempts and so many near misses, I was losing hope. But then the universe handed me a gift. A runnable seed. I started off next to an ocean and immediately saw a shipwreck and a ruined portal. These structures gave me everything. Iron, food, a gold helmet, and a map. But I wanted more. So I looted the buried treasure, found a lava ravine, and entered the nether in only five minutes. This is a pretty good pace for me, but nothing that screams god tier run. At least not until I saw this. Oh, there's a fortress right there. Okay. Right on zero zero is a fortress. That's really good to know, actually. The bastion should be this way. The bastion's right there. Hold up. Okay. 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 I see. I see what you're doing, video game. I see what you're doing. I like it. What's even better? It was a bridge bastion. So I was easily able to get all my gold, do the trades, and sprint to the fortress in only a few minutes. At this point, I was already locked in, so I wasn't paying attention to the blaze rates, but I went 8 for 9 on blaze rods, which is insane. 
Fun fact, blaze rods have a 50% chance to drop, so the chances of getting this lucky are less than 2%. Instead of building a portal in the fortress, I just went back to my first portal since it was so close and threw my first eye. Now, I have a bit of a confession to make. I still do not know how to use the triangulation calculator, so I instead just ran 250 blocks in the right direction in the nether, since that's equivalent to 2,000 blocks in the overworld, and built another portal knowing that I'd be relatively close to the stronghold, which I was. I should be close, and I was close. Nice. Good. Good. And after killing every mob in the game, I filled in the portal at just 24 minutes in-game time. This was it. With less than one day left in the challenge, this was the moment to prove that all the grinding, all the practicing, all the hours of resetting garbage seeds was worth it. All I needed to do was wait for the dragon to perch. Please just perch and let me just do this so I can get this over with. And wait. Oh, please go. Please go. And wait. Please, come on. I, 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 I... This is rigged, right? By the way, the reason I'm standing so far from the pillar is because the dragon is supposed to perch faster if you stand off to the side. But like, that has to be a myth, right? You're telling me this fight would take even longer if I stood in the center? No, I'm sorry, I don't believe you. Whoever started this rumor is a liar and a fraud. Yeah, I said it, but finally, it happened. That was it. Oh, it went screwy. I can't, I can't press it because the Enderman. I can't press it. The Enderman. So this guy, this heathen, knew I was seconds away from victory and thought it'd be really funny to block me from placing beds like he's a freaking point guard in the NBA. Hey, look at me, guys. I'm Yao Ming. No, you're just an asshole. Get off my team. <laughs> Okay, well, I didn't die at least, so I guess I can try again. I pressed it. I pressed it. I did, though. Okay. Uh, third time's the charm? That was so a snap. What do you mean? Boo. Oh, now you're snapping. And I won't have enough... Yeah, things were rough. And you could hear it in my voice. All my motivation for this run was gone. What are you doing? What even are you doing? But I wanted to give it just one more try. Yeah. I can't place- It wouldn't let me place it! Ah! ah! And that, my friends, was the final straw. I don't get it, but why? Like, I'm, I'm spam clicking on the thing. I'm fucking jitter clicking on the thing, and it just doesn't place. It just wouldn't place. Now, I'd love to tell you that I rallied back from that disaster and got a winning run on the very next seed, and I'd love to be one of those YouTubers who faked their challenges for content. Yo, is this the run? Is this gonna be the run where I get it done? Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Hold on, my hunger's getting a little low. I gotta, gotta fuel up. All right, just don't pay attention to the bottom left corner there. Just don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> Nothing going on here. And boom. Oh my goodness, guys, I did it! I did it! What? Oh my gosh. WORLD RECORD! WHAT?! But I'm not a liar, and you guys are way too old to fall for that shit. I made some half-hearted attempts, but I was mentally checked out, and I finished the challenge in the exact same position as I'd been a week ago, with zero completed Minecraft speedruns. So, sorry guys. I know you wanted to watch me get better at speedrunning, but turns out I couldn't. But hold on, no, I did get better at speedrunning. Look at how much faster I entered the nether in my last run than in the first run. 
51 versus 24 minutes? That's some insane improvement for just one week. And I learned so much about routing bastions and navigating the overworld and all these other small things that add up, like waiting to eat until you're in the nether portal to save that extra second. Like, I would have never thought to do that a week ago. And sure, I never actually completed a run, but sometimes that just happens in life. Sometimes you don't reach your goal no matter how hard you try, but that doesn't mean you give up. You've got to keep fighting because that is the only way you'll ever succeed. And don't worry, I'm not done with speedrunning, not by a long shot. I'm taking another shot at this challenge, and this time, I'm getting her done. Or I mean, if I don't, cheating is always still an option. Let's go!